All right, so we are picking up where we left off yesterday with our heat transfer notes, and this is going to fill out the rest of the sheet that you have. I think it's on page 34. Um, so we discussed how heat works and how it behaves in yesterday's part of the notes, and today we're going to focus on the three different methods that heat uses to transfer from one object to another. So the first one is called conduction, and this is known as the transfer of heat from one particle to another without the movement of matter in between. So that basically means that something has to touch something else in order to be heated up. So we know that molecules in a heated object move faster. So they have more energy, they're moving faster, they're trying to spread apart. So when another object comes in direct contact with it, heat will be transferred to it. So something that I used to remember this, because when I was in school, I always liked to come up with ways to remember things um, just to connect it in my head a little better. Conduction has a D in it. And I remember conduction has to do with direct contact, which also has the beginning letter of D. So conduction equals direct contact. And this example here has a picture of a pot sitting on a stove. Um, and if you've ever helped out in the kitchen before, um, I highly suggest you do if you haven't. Um, but if you've ever helped out and you've been using like a metal spoon to stir something in the pot and then you set it down inside the pot and walk away for a few minutes, um, if you've ever done that, you probably notice when you come back and you try to pick up the spoon without an oven mitt or anything protecting your hand, it's going to burn you. The reason is the heat starts with the stove coil when you turn on that power. The stove coil then transfers the heat to the pot, which then transfers the heat to the spoon, and the spoon goes directly to your hand. So it's kind of like a chain reaction, all because things are touching, and the heat is able to travel because of that contact. So you probably heard of conductors and insulators, and this has everything to do with conduction, and that's something else that you can use to remember conduction because we have the same type of word here. So conductors are objects that allow heat to easily flow through them and so some examples that you can write down um, include any type of metal like silver or stainless steel. Um, you might even say tile floors. Um, I know that at the house that I grew up in we used to have like a vent underneath the sink in my parents kitchen and there were tile floors in the kitchen so when I was younger and going to school, like I'd wake up and walk into the kitchen to get breakfast and the floor would be really cold, but I'd walk over next to that vent for my feet to warm up because my feet were so cold. And that floor was conducting the heat pretty well, so it was heating up really quickly. So that's just a way to think about it. You might have some other ideas too. Insulators are the opposite. They don't allow heat to flow through them very easily. So examples of things are Insulators would be anything that blocks the heat, keeps it in, or keeps it away from other things. And so this is why in the winter time, it's um, people often wear like wool socks or really thick sweaters because that'll keep the heat inside. It'll keep you warm when you're outside. Other examples include wood, like wood chippings, straw, paper, cork, and even gases. So these are examples of things that involve conduction because of that direct contact. And insulators kind of keep you ha from having that contact. Another type of heat transfer is called convection. So this kind of reminds me of vents, just the V part. And vents blow out warm air or cool air based on what you're trying to do in your house. Convection deals with the movement of currents within a fluid. And a fluid can be considered either a liquid or a gas, basically anything that flows. So heat is transferred in convection through liquid or through a gas but it's not through con direct contact. So examples here um, involve water boiling and baseboard heat um, that is used in houses to kind of flow through the house and create this circulation of the heat. Um, basically, one way to remember this, both of these pictures involve circulation. So in examples that we're going to talk about in class, one key for you to remember is if, it, if there's any type of circulation or there's a current um, that all connects back to convection. Finally, radiation is the third way that heat can be transferred, and this is the transfer by light waves. So radiation does not necessarily have to travel through matter the way that conduction and convection do. So just think about the sun and how the sun's heat gets to the earth. Well, the sun's light is traveling through space to earth. The word space means exactly what it sounds like. There's space, there's no matter, 
and yet we can still be heated by the sun's rays once it passes through our atmosphere. So it doesn't have to travel through matter, but it can. Some examples to think of include the sun. Um, if you've ever had a bonfire, like one of those big fires that you can roast marshmallows by, um, that's one way. You don't necessarily have to stick the marshmallow in the fire to get it to heat up. Um, and heat lamps like at um, like buffet restaurants, kind of like Golden Corral, um, trying to think of other places, CC's, so places that have a lot of food sitting under lamps, those lamps usually involve heat to keep the food warm. So finally, we have some practice, and um, we need to just tell the method of heat transfer based on the examples. So the first example says, an entire lake is heated by water from a hot spring at the bottom of the lake. So this is very similar to what we did in class today where we were putting different temperatures of water all together. And if we had taken the hot water and put it at the bottom, then that hot water would have risen up to the top and it would have probably made all the water the same temperature. And so when it's dealing with liquid and fluids, we have a current that takes place and we end up having an example of convection. Okay, the next one says sunlight melts a wax crown left outside. Your key here is sunlight, and sunlight deals with radiation. I'm going to have to kind of abbreviate it because I don't have a lot of room, but you do, so write out the whole word. The next one is a burner on a stove heats the bottom of a pot. While the pot is touching the burner on the stove, that implies direct contact, which means this is going to be conduction. Finally, the inside of your frame of your front door feels cold during the winter, so if you touch that inside frame, um, especially the window part, a lot of times you might notice that it gets cold and that cold feeling is the heat leaving your hand as it goes into the door. And so again, you're touching it, it feels. So that's another example of conduction. So in class, when we're back together again, we are gonna look at a lot of other examples of this and see how we can apply these different types of heat transfer to our lives. So if you have any questions, be sure that you write them down or um, send them in a message on Edmodo or email and let us know so we can have a discussion. You have a good afternoon, and I'll see you.